Welcome to the desk setup of my office 2022. Ah, hell it. Peter, got that my in my stool. Hope everything is good with you. Do you remember how this place looked when I moved in here? It has been such a huge change in these last two years that <laughs> it's kind of hard to grasp. This was the corner that I had my first desk in and instead of having these here I had like the desk placed here and it didn't really give any depth to the videos. Kind of just felt cramped and uh, forced to be in there. And that is where I decided to move the desk out here. And as I moved out here, I had a black desk from Ikea as well with basically like an L shape, but not as big as this. And I had the monitor placed right here. So I could only had like the camera from this angle or from that angle over here. And didn't really give me the feeling that I wanted to because one of the things that I wanted to achieve with this space was basically to turn it into some sort of film set and to be able to interact with everything on camera. So that is where I came up with this kind of desk setup. The desk that I'm using here is an Udåsen from Ikea. And um, I think it looks pretty good, especially considering for what you pay. It's not that expensive. It is very <coughs> sturdy and uh, you can extend it the way that I've done with a couple of flat irons and just screw, do you say screw? The two tables together if you want to do a setup like mine. The reason that I like a setup like this is because I have this angle, which is my talking head angle, my unboxing angle, and I wanted to have everything within reach. And then I can just turn over here. So whenever I'm editing a video, I know that I can just go back and make some adjustments to the unboxing or something similar. It's also very good when you are vlogging to be able to have this kind of space, but also when you're making tutorials to just turn over here and then you have two different camera angles, which kind of gives you uh, you know, good flow when you're making videos. And one of the most important things when I set this desk up the way that I have was that I wanted to be able to walk around the desk and see everything from all the different angles. But also when I'm shooting my B-rolls and my unboxings, then I can use all these practical lights that I have in the background as fill lights and ambience lights and give a little bit of more depth to the products that I'm shooting. I've also installed an electrical outlet in both of the desks so that I can charge my devices without trying to find a plug somewhere else in the studio. Under each desk, I have installed a Philips Hue tube. I don't think that these have been around for that long. And you can actually have three different colors on at the same time in each tube, which gives it a lot of depth. It's actually a very simple attachment. As you can see right here, this part you actually screw into the desk and then just take this tiny screw and attach the gradient light with. And what I really like about these is that you can turn them so you can have more light or you can just fold them upwards and the light is gonna be falling off in a different angle. And I also think it gives the desk uh, kind of a floating feeling. It feels very like airy when you look at it and that's cool. And it's also very easy on the eyes compared to the big LED lights that I have when I'm shooting my videos. Then we have the cutting mat, which is a Vantage cutting mat that I bought off of Amazon. It is a, I think 90 times 60 centimeters. I think this is the perfect size. It's a great thing to have when you're unboxing, but also very good when you're doing different kind of product shoots because these lines on the mat gives it a little bit of structure to 
the B-roll that you're shooting of product or the product pictures that you're taking. It makes the entire scene a little bit more interesting and also a very good contrast to the brownish that we got on the table. And then of course I have my main light over here as well, which is the Nanolite Forza 300 with a 90 centimeter softbox and attached to that is a grid. This is in my opinion one of the best lights that you can get for the price that you pay because it packs a really good punch and you can have big soft boxes and you don't have to worry about not having enough power. And the main camera that I use when I'm sitting here shooting my videos is the Sony 7S III together with the 24 millimeter GM lens. And this camera is basically here 99% of the time and then I have another a7S III so that when I'm out vlogging, when I'm out shooting, I'm using that as my running gun camera together with my small camera, the ZV-1. But this is here to like make the entire workflow a lot more efficient so that I can just sit down in the chair and then hit record. Talking about the chair, this one, I've been getting a lot of questions and I thought I should answer those of you wondering which kind of share it is. It is from a website that is called HGH Office and it is called Spectre. What I really like about this chair is that it feels extremely ergonomical and it looks badass. It looks like something that is from a like Horizon Zero Dawn cockpit room that you enter. Commander Peter, you're welcome to take a seat. Don't mind if I do. Oi, oi, oi. I don't know. And I think that the white off the chair gives it a little bit of contrast to the otherwise really dark studio and it fits in perfectly. And it is very, very comfortable to sit on, especially when you're doing like this. Then you can just sit here and sleep. <laughs> the long wool desk pad that I have is from Grovemade and uh, I think it looks very good. It gives the desk a nice contrast and also very comfy to has, have your hands on because it feels like uh, a pair of ragisocker <laughs> now. And it's also very easy to move or roll up if you don't want to use it. The shelf is also from Grovemade and I really like the fact that it gives me another level of space where you can stack stuff. So I have my Rodecaster Pro, we have a notebook, we have some pens, and then we have my devices over here, the iPad and the contact signer pen. The mouse that I'm using is the Logitech MX Master 3, which is by far the best mouse that I've ever used during my entire career of using a computer. <laughs> I think that that is like 15 years or something. And uh, to that I have the MX keys for Mac. I think that these are great. They work super well for what I'm doing. There's probably better keyboards, but I feel very comfortable with them. And it's also super easy to switch between different computers if you're using a bunch of different ones. So I can just hit a button and then I'm ready to go over to the next computer. I have a multi charger for my iPhone, my Apple Watch and my AirPods. And uh, I think that this is a way of increasing my own productivity, mainly because I put my iPhone on the magnet charger when I arrive to the office and then I try to let it be there for as long as I can without actually grabbing the phone. And this makes me use my phone less. And when I have my Apple Watch on charge, I have my phone on charge and my AirPods, then I'm also not thinking about grabbing them all the time. So I only grab them when I need them. For example, if I'm gonna have a meeting or something, then I can take them away. But I really like to have everything in one place and know that when someone calls or when I get a text message, I can grab my phone and then I can reply quickly and then put it back. But it has definitely helped to increase my own productivity. So if you're thinking about getting one of these power stations for your devices, it is something that I can recommend. I'm also using the iPad mini a whole lot here in the studio because I think it's the perfect size. By far not the perfect screen. It could be way better, but it is so intuitive to use and you can use the Apple Pen and it's easy, it's small, it doesn't take up that much space. I just like the overall feeling of bringing the display with me if I need to. The speakers that I'm using is from Adam Audio. It is the T5V model. These speakers have made me not using headphones anymore when I'm here in the studio. 
it just sounds so good when you're editing sound effects and you want to do multiple layers. The audio is just incredibly crisp. And I plug these into a Scarlett 2 i2 audio interface so that you can just have a nice, crisp, clean audio just plugging that in with USB-C to my multiport dock. And uh, when it comes to my multiport dock, I'm actually using a Bridgestone Pro. If you have a lot of devices that you want to plug into one single unit and then just have one cable that goes into your computer, then having a Thunderbolt dock is so good. It is you don't have to care for anything anymore. It's just like, it works. And whenever I'm doing any kind of voiceovers, I am using my Rodecaster Pro, which is also connected to the dock. And uh, to the Rodecaster, I am actually using the Rode Pod mic. And now to one of the most interesting parts on my end, the monitors. This is something that I've actually been investing in quite recently. And my main monitor is a Dell UP3221Q. This is a very expensive monitor, but after using it for a little bit over a week, it is also one of the best monitors that I have ever tried. And on my other end, I have a LG OLED ultrafine display, which is also a very expensive monitor because both of these monitors are true 10-bit monitors with HDR capabilities. It might look like the OLED screen is flickering when you're watching through the videos, but it's not actually something that you can see. However, this screen is so much brighter than this though. So when you're sitting with them side by side, this lights up a whole lot more. And I'm also using the LG screen to have my notes on whenever I'm recording these kind of videos so that I just drag it on, sit here, know exactly what to say, what to talk about, and don't have to bring up another device or anything like that. And not only do I have this display, but I've also connected this TV that I got in ceiling to work if I need to have another display to watch the content that I'm making. And since both monitors are put on gas-powered arms, it's also very simple to just put them together and form some sort of like dual screen setup whenever I want to edit something that requires a little bit more screen real estate, such as something that has a lot of sound effects that I have to go through. I can say that this made a huge difference on how I see my footage, my images, and it just looks way better on these two monitors than any other monitors that I've used. And even though both these monitors are very expensive, I actually got them for less than what one Apple Pro XDR display would have cost me. Yeah. <laughs> And if you want to see a comparison between these two monitors, do drop a comment down below because I might just dive into that. Uh, I will make a review on the Dell monitor, but let me know if you want to know more about the LG as well. There's probably going to be a bunch of stuff done to the desk setup moving into 2022. And throughout the year, I'm probably going to find a bunch of different ways on how to optimize my workflow even more. But as of right now, this is a setup that I'm very, very pleased with. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if this is your first time watching me, don't forget to subscribe because I would love to see you in the next video. Until next time, Peter from Sweden saying goodbye. Take care.